Good morning, and I do hope you are well. Our reading this morning is again taken from the first book of Kings. It tells us about an incident involving Naboth's vineyard. Some time later, there was an incident involving a vineyard belonging to Naboth the Jezreelite. The vineyard was in Jezreel, close to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. Ahab said to Naboth, Let me have your vineyard to use as a vegetable garden, since it is close to my palace. In exchange, I will give you a better vineyard, or if you prefer, I will pay you whatever it is worth. But Naboth replied, The Lord forbid that I should give you the inheritance of my ancestors. So Ahab went home, sullen and angry, because Naboth the Jezreelite had said, I will not give you the inheritance of my ancestors. He lay on his bed sulking and refused to eat. His wife Jezebel came in and asked him, Why are you so sullen? Why won't you eat? He answered her, Because I said to Naboth the Jezreelite, Sell me your vineyard, or if you prefer, I will give you another vineyard in its place. But he said, I will not give you my vineyard. Jezebel his wife said, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, placed his seal on them, and sent them to the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city with him. In those letters she wrote, Proclaim a day of fasting, and seat Naboth in a prominent place among the people. But seat two scoundrels opposite him, and have them bring charges that he has cursed both God and the king, then take him out and stone him to death. So the elders and nobles who lived in Naboth's city did as Jezebel directed in the letters she had written to them. They proclaimed a fast and seated Naboth in a prominent place among the people. Then two scoundrels came and sat opposite him, and brought charges against Naboth before the people, saying, Naboth has cursed both God and the king. So they took him outside the city and stoned him to death. Then they sent word to Jezebel, Naboth has been stoned to death. As soon as Jezebel heard that Naboth had been stoned to death, she said to Ahab, Get up and take possession of the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, that he refused to sell to you. He is no longer alive but dead. When Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, he got up and went down to take possession of Naboth's vineyard. Powerful people so often expect other people to give them what they want, even if their demand is unreasonable. Today's story is only about a small piece of land that, frankly, probably wasn't worth dying for. But Ahab had no right to demand it, and Naboth was quite right to refuse him. In some ways, I feel a little sorry for Ahab, because centuries later, his wife Jezebel is far better known than he ever was. He comes over as weak and petulant. He could have and should have stood up to his manipulative wife. Yes, I have called her manipulative, because she knew how to appeal to Ahab's vanity by saying, Is this how you act as king over Israel? Get up and eat. Cheer up. I'll get you the vineyard of Naboth the Jesuitite. Come on, Ahab. You could have put a stop to that nonsense. So how long should we stop tyrants getting whatever they want, whether it's just a vineyard or a slice of another country, like the Sudetenland in 1938, or a bit of Ukraine in the 21st century? When is enough enough? And how do we square it with Jesus saying, When someone asks you for something, give it to him. When someone wants to borrow something from you, let him have it. Jesus didn't qualify his words, but because he sometimes spoke in hyperbole to make people think, he may not have meant this to apply to geopolitics, or he may have done. I'll leave you with something to reflect on over the next week. We've probably all heard how we should guide our actions with the question, What would Jesus do? But I read recently that this direction is better phrased as what would Jesus want me to do 
rather than what would Jesus do. The writer suggests that our actions should be guided by our knowledge of God and his word, as well as by the continual direction of the Holy Spirit. So I'll finish with the question for us. What would Jesus want me to do? And now let us pray. Reflecting on the Diocese of Oxford's emphasis on us being called to be Christ-like, contemplative, compassionate and courageous, so we pray. God of gentleness and love, draw near to us as we draw near to you. Dwell in every heart and conversation. Fashion us into the likeness of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to discern together all that you are calling us to be and all that you are calling us to do. Assist us by your Spirit to become a more contemplative, more compassionate and more courageous church for the building of your kingdom and the glory of your Son. Amen. And we continue to pray for peace in Ukraine, using a prayer from Christian aid in the Eastern tradition. We implore you, O merciful God, look with grace upon those who courageously defend their land. Remember the mothers and fathers, the innocent children, widows and orphans, the disabled and helpless, those seeking shelter and refuge, who reach out to you and to their fellow human beings, looking for mercy and compassion. Bless the hearts of those who have already shown great generosity and solidarity, and those who receive their Ukrainian brothers and sisters in their country's greatest time of need. Bring us together as your children, your creation, and instil in us your strength, wisdom and understanding. May you be praised and glorified, now and for ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And now we bring all our prayers together, in the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Stay safe. Our Monday evening prayers for Ukraine continue tonight at Holy Trinity Church. And remember that Richard Simmons will lead our prayers on Friday.